seeing it in this context of the short films and the longer work, which, which had me thinking about your previous work in a very different way. So I was wondering how we could sort of think about this. The first, the first short works, which were from various source footage, archival footage, were funny, just really good and funny. And it had, I mean, it was on a rewind for me. I started thinking about my life as a poster and the Charles Sobraj work. So when I saw this one, I was, there were two things that were coming to my mind. I think you have a long-standing interest in criminals and grifters. It appears that that is clearly the case, right? And to a large extent, I remember when I watched the audience with my life as a poster, and even if it's embellished, I think it's in keeping with the mood today. Um, I think few people are really upset that they did, when they found out that these were not photographs of your family, right? So coming from that space of wit and lampooning and counterfeiting, etc., I found this film, to, please don't beat me, sir, to be played so straight that I was actually kind of surprised. I kept thinking, like, where is Shash's work? I mean, like, where is it? Because it felt like, okay, this, this is going to be as straight as possible. And I thought at the end I would have, like, an Abbas Kurustami ending where it would, the whole thing would be a joke, and the joke would be on us, and such a tribe never existed, you know? I kept thinking that would, that's what would happen. So I don't know how to express this. A little bit of a disappointment, I think that's what I'm thinking. I think, like, where's the wit? And on the other hand, I think this is so strange. I wonder what she thinks of her own work now, right? I'm, I'm sort of thinking, what, like, think of what the past is. If only, I mean, do they know that you made the Charles Sobraj film is what I wanted to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but what do they make of it, right? I mean, this is sort of like, they would think like, yeah, you're the grifter yeah, amongst them. So I was wondering if you could actually talk about what happens to somebody like you, who's literally, whose hands are tied in this case, because it felt like the wit had kind of disappeared. Okay, so I was wondering what, at what cost is that? Actually, uh, you know, the truth is stranger than fiction, you see. And, you know, what it was is, um, actually, you know, when we sort of went into the neighborhood, what I, what I found was, um, actually, these are like the funnest people to actually hang out with. Now, you know, the thing with thieves is they're smarter than everybody else and they're better traveled than anybody else. And uh, so what, what happened was that there was absolutely like no need to, you know, do any of the other stuff that, you know, uh, it just didn't. I didn't really feel the need to treat it the same way I had done my other work because um, because the reality that one was sort of dealing with was just sort of so entertaining for me. I mean, I know, I, I think it's like really irresponsible to say that you make your work to sort of entertain yourself. And it's like not so, and with this one, it's kind of like not so clear because all the entertainment was kind of happening sort of off screen because these people are way more fun than my buddy daddy family is to hang out with so you know so it was there was like absolutely no need to do the other stuff that I'm I've so enjoyed doing in the past but uh, I just wanted to ask you like uh, the performance of the theater before the police academy how did that happen I mean how did they allow the people to perform like you know because earlier we were seeing there was this all these were the voices were very poignant against the police and how they were treating the youth. So how did it happen, you know? Like, you know, um, what happened was, um, you know, the, the police commissioner, you know, because you, if you know about how uh, sort of uh, the police system sort of works, like the officers, they come in through a different set of exams and they're assigned in a different way. And, the, uh, and that's sort of like an all-India... Um, sort of system, and then you sort of have the state that also has its sort of own exams and so on, and then, but, and that's where like sort of your sub-inspectors and your, you know, and your beat cops, that's how they'll sort of get in, and, the, and their problems are often with the people that they're dealing with directly, which is the policemen at the local station and the local thana, right? So the officers often, they'll be very interested in maybe, you know, and uh, the particular police commissioner was very, uh, you know, who actually runs the academy. He was very interested in sort of changing the curriculum and creating dialogue and doing things in a different way. But, you know, he actually has, like, no influence on the actual police work that happens. So the officers may be very progressive, but they have absolutely, because, you know, because the cop on the beat kind of knows that he's just going to get transferred. He's going to upset Modi about something or the other, and then he's just going to be transferred somewhere else or be sent off to the boonies. So they know that 
you know, he's just there for a few years. So, you know, and that's sort of, you know, so that's kind of the internal conflict within the police department that goes on. And so the officer happened to be quite progressive, and he really wanted to sort of change things. So, you know, when Budan Theater approached them to do a performance in the police academy, he agreed. So it was through him. 